Zahvalimo se gospodinu Prebenu, a sada bih najavio još jednog predavača, eminentnog, to je gospodin Norman Karik iz Brightona, iz Velike Britanije, Univerzitet Sussex, Laboratorija za pčelarstvo i socijalne insekte. Ladies and gentlemen, I will introduce the next one, the next lecturer, Norman, uh, Norman Karik, Brighton, Great Britain, Uni University of Sussex, Laboratory for uh, Beekeeping and uh, others. Thank you. Right, thank you very much uh, for inviting me here. It's uh, good to come back to Serbia. Um, I am also going to be talking about Ferrara, uh, and uh, I, I hope that what I say will complement what Trebem has just said. Zahvaljujem na pozivu, ovo je drugi put, on je već bio u Srbiji. Isto će govoriti o Varoji i zahvaljujem Trebenu što je već neke stvari rekao. Uh, so I'm just going to start by introducing beekeeping in Britain and Ireland. Uh, and as you can see, there are a number of different beekeeping associations in, in the different countries that make up uh, the British Isles. And there is also another association that, that represents the commercial beekeepers, the bee farmers. O, pokazuje kako je u Engleskoj, oni imaju veći broj a, čelarskih udruženja, a, ima oni koji se samo bave, da kažemo, komercijalom, plasmanom, a otprilike broj društava pčelinjih je 220.000. And uh, these uh, different associations between them mean that the beekeepers have uh, probably about a quarter of a million uh, hives between them. And I understand in Serbia you have twice that number. Kaže, popuno mu je jasno da sa omoliko koštica imaju dosta čerovskih udruženja, jer u skladu sa tim, obzir okolik je broj koštica u Srbiji, jasno je da je mnogo veći broj udruženja u Srbiji. And I need to say a little bit about the climate in Britain, because although we are a small group of countries, we do have very varied climate. We have uh, a maritime climate. Which means that in the southwest of, of England, the climate tends to be very mild and wet, and in the northeast, it tends to be dry and cold. Samim tim, zbog ovakvog položaja, jugozapad njihove države je sa blagom i vlažnom klimom, a severno i istočno je hladno i suvo. And this is very relevant to talking about the choice of control methods for Varroa, which I will come, come on to in a minute. A to je ključno za dalju priču o odabiru metode kontrole Varroa. It's worth saying that uh, we, we do have uh, quite a lot of uh, government support uh, for the beekeeping and in recent years we have something called the Healthy Bees Plan which is uh, aiming to improve uh, the beekeeping industry through improving uh, the way that we're keeping our bees, particularly with a view to disease control. Vrlo je bitno da kaže da imaju podršku države, da je država, evo, baš poslednjih godina napravila i plan koji ima za cilj zaštitu i poboljšanje zdravlja čela u Engleskoj versu, znači to je izuzetno bitno za njihov napredanje. And under that we, we have a national bee unit which maintains a database of all the bee colonies they know about uh, and they provide a lot of information on the distribution of pests and diseases uh, around the country. Naravno, internet sajt o koji govori o svemu što je aktuelno, o distribuciji štetočina, bolesti, primene pesticida. So I'm going to specifically talk about uh, Varroa. And for 
Vera was found in the UK in 1992, so uh, quite a number of years after you had Vera in Central Europe, it was finding its way to more obscure places like the British Isles and Sweden. I kod njih je stigla Varoa, prvi put je utvrđena 92. godine, znači pre 25 godina. So this was the first headline from, from when Varoa was discovered in the UK in 1992, and you can see it was uh, described as, uh, as the equivalent of rabies for bees. Uh, rabies. Rabies. Uh, Nije kuga, nego, znači smrtonosna pošast otkrivena u demonu. Desni, desni. And these were these were several reports in the in the beekeeping press at the time. And uh, as in Sweden, originally the intention was to have uh, a, a line or, or areas of the country which would be kept forever free. Uh, but this only lasted a very short time. It didn't work. Uh, obviously, the uh, uh, the mites could not read the instructions from the ministry, uh, and it spread around the country. Slično kao u Švedskoj, kad je utvrđeno određenim regionima da ima baroje, pokušali su da ostale regione očuvaju bez baroje, ali baroje nisu marile za ministarstvo i njihove preporuke, tako da su se vrlo brzo proširile baroje svuda. And uh, very rapidly there was concern that so many beehives would be lost, that there would be a, a risk to pollination of fruit crops, which are very important in, in parts of Britain. Vrlo brzo je postalo jasno da zbog varoje će biti problema ne samo čelarstvo kao vrani, nego i za polinaciju, odnosno prašivanje i prinos voće i povrće. Uh, and I want, I want to just talk about a little bit of research that I was involved in when Varroa was first found in the UK, trying to understand exactly how Varroa harms colonies. Govorit ću o istraživanjima koje su počeli još na samom početku, radi utvrđivanja uzroka na koji sve način Varroa šteti čelom. And at the time I was working at a, uh, a place called Rothamsted Experimental Station, which has a long history of bee research, uh, going back uh, to the early 20th century. And I was working with a lady called Brenda Ball, uh, a bee pathologist, who was the first person to uh, look at the association between varroa and viruses. Na početku je radio u ove de navedenoj instituciji sa čuvenom brendom Bolu, koja je prva utvrdila vezu između varoa i virusa, inače, ko ne zna, ona je glavnu knjigu napisala o bolestima čela. So, in, in 1992, as, as soon as we could, we went down to Devon in the southwest of England, which was the first place where Varroa has been had been discovered, uh, and we were we were really looking to see what effect Varroa was having on uh, naturally infested colonies, and we were looking at dead bees and mites to see what uh, diseases were present. Znači, baš na samom početku, kad je prvi put utvrđena Varroa u Engleskoj, on je sa, lično sa brendom Bolišo na jugozapad Engleske, gde je utvrđeno prisustvo i pokorno su gledali sve posledice prisustva Varroe, šta se dešava sa društvom, šta se dešava sa pčelama, brojali mrtve pčele, mrtve Varroe, živa Varroe. Uh, and this is this is Dartmoor, which is a, a, an area of high ground uh, in Devon. It's moorland with uh, heather, and lots of beekeepers move their hives for the heather honey there. Što je najtužnije, taj predo je prepun vresa i mnogi pčelari upravo tamo sele pčele. And this this was one such hive, uh, and. This colony looks quite good here, uh, but actually this colony and all the other colonies in this acre uh, were dead uh, a couple
couple of weeks after that photograph was taken. Ovo je, evo vidite kako izgleda, u tom momentu je bilo odlično, ne, ne delo je da je nešto mnogo falilo, ali par nedelja napod ove slike uginula je ova pošnica i to je upravo isto tog čevenjaka gde je bilo ova roja. And when you look closely at the hive, you can see why that colony was going to die. It has uh, it had a huge infestation of mites and lots of dead larvae and pupae uh, dying in their cells. Ali već tada dok nije uginula, kad su oni pregledali, videli su kakva je situacija, veliki broj krpelja, veliki stepen infekcije i mnogo uginulih larvi lutki. And when we examined the dead bees and mites from these colonies, we found that almost all of the, the bees and brood were infected with a virus called slow paralysis virus, and this was quite a surprise to us. Analize su po prvi put, znači je to tada utvrđeno, sve pčele su imale i larve, sve su imale uh, virus spore paralize, što je bilo iznenađenje. And this was a virus which had been uh, known about for some years and had been uh, isolated in the laboratory but had never previously been found to actually harm bees in the field. Znači, to je tada prvi put izolovan, ali nije se znalo da on ima ikakve loše efekte po pčele same u košnici. Uh, and we were able to demonstrate that the mite by feeding on the bees was actually transmitting this virus from bee to bee, from, uh, from uh, adult bee to uh, larvae and from pupae to adult bees again in a transmission cycle. Znači, on je upravo lično učestvovao u tim prvim istraživanjima gde su dokazali da krpe koji siše hemolimfu pčele se zarazi virusom i prenosi je na ostale pčele i na leglo. But we only found this particular virus, uh, which is very rapidly fatal to bees, in colonies that had very high, very large numbers of mites in them. Ali su to utvrdili samo kod onih društava koje su bile baš puno infestirane sa velikim stepenom infestacije krpeljom. But after a couple of years, we started to see bees with these very distinctive symptoms of the, the crippled wings that Trevor mentioned, uh, and this is caused by another virus which isn't so rapidly fatal, uh, but is called deformed wing virus. And if you look in books about Varroa, this symptom is described from everywhere in the world where Varroa has been found. Drugi virus koji su otkrili je virus koga zovemo virus deformisani krila ili deformacije krila, a simptomi su jako vidljivi u ovom slučaju i vi danas svuda na svetu imate ovaj, nažalost mogućnost da vidite ove simptome i to je drugi virus koji je utvrđen da ga prenosi varova. And I'm just including one, one diagram here, uh, which was the result of several years' work, and it really explains why varroa is damaging to colonies. So each of these lines represents a single colony of bees which we monitored for mites and viruses for more than one year. Svaka linija predstavlja po jednu košnicu koju su pratili u dužem periodu, duže od jedne godine. And we can divide these colonies into the ones that, uh, that collapsed, the ones that died, the red ones, and the ones that survived on the left. Dve glavne grupe su ova crvena grupa gde su sva društva uginula, a zelene i žute su opstale. And we can divide them into the colonies that had a virus present and the colonies that didn't have a virus present. Ove preživele, žute i zelene, se dele na zelene koje su preživele, a imale su virus, 
a žute su preživele, a nisu imale virus. So, in our yellow group there, we have the colonies where we found no virus and they had mites, but they survived. Znači, žute su imale varoje, ali nisu imale viruse i preživele su, a zelene su imale i varoje i viruse i one su uglavnom uginu. Odnosno, mali broj preživele. And this... This colony here goes off the top of the scale. That colony had 24,000 mites in it, and it did not die. 24,000 krpelja. Ova koja je imala najbolje, najviše krpelja, najveća, najvišlja ova žuta linija, je društvo koje imalo najviše krpelja, a preživelo je, ali nije imalo virusa. And along the bottom here, these little letters represent the viruses that we found. Mainly deformed wing virus, but also slow paralysis virus and, and a few others. Znači, dole mala slova, C, D, S, pokazuju koje viruse su imala društva. Uglavnom virus deformisani krila, ispore paralize i po još neki gdje je bilo treći. Ali uglavnom su po dva ili jedi. And you can see there is the, the green group of colonies which had virus but a small number of mites and they survived. Ove zelene koje su preživele imale su malo krpelja, znači nis, jako su niske ove zelene linije pokazuju malo krpelja, ali su imale virus. And then you have the red group of colonies and they had virus and they had mites and they all died. And you can see from the graph that if you have more than about 2,000 mites and you have virus, your colony will die. Najveći broj, nažalost, je bio onih društava koje su imale i krpelje i viruse, što pokazuje da je to siguran put u uginuće. And the bad news is that those yellow colonies with no virus only occurred in the first few years after Varroa appeared. Nažalost, ove žute koje su imale Varrou, ali nisu imale viruse, detektovane postojale su samo prve dve godine. Takve koje su imale Varrou bez virusa i koje su u principu obstajale i sa puno krpelja. And we found within two years of Varroa arriving in Britain that all the colonies we tested had deformed wing virus present in them. Nakon te prve dve godine, već od sledeće, sva društva koje su imala krpelje, imala su i virus, makar virus deformisani krila, obavezno, a može i druge. So, we really now have to assume that all colonies will have deformed wing virus present, and if you allow more than, say, 2,000 mites in your colony, it will die. Znači, možemo da rezimiramo da ako ima krpelje, imat će i virus deformisani krila i da će otprilike za dve godine da ugine. So therefore our Varroa control strategy must aim to ensure that mite populations never reach the kind of levels where your colonies are going to die. Da, i rekao je malo pre, sam zaboravila, ako ima društvo 2000 krpelja, to je neka granična vrednost od koje možete da budete sigurni da će da ugine. And, and this doesn't just apply to, to Britain. This is a paper written by a colleague of mine, Stephen Martin, uh, who went to Hawaii in, uh, in the Pacific Ocean, another place where Varroa occurred for the first time. And he then had the advantage of uh, more advanced analytical techniques than we have. Uh, and he confirmed that deformed wing virus uh, became very important within a, a short time of her arriving. Slično situaciju ima njegov kolega na, neko, na nekim havajskim, na havajskim čelama, uh, gde se također desilo da uh, vrlo brzo nakon dolaska varoje se pojave i virusi, pogotovo virus deformisani krila. So my question is, 
why is Ferrara still a problem in the UK? Because, you know, it was founded in 1992 and we have lots of experience. Why are we having this meeting today talking about Ferrara 40 years after it was founded in Central Europe? Zašto je Ferrara i dalje problem u Engleskoj? Kad znamo kada se pojavila i koliko već godina iskustva imamo u borbi s njima. Is it because the beekeepers are ignorant and they don't know about Ferrara? I think actually it's because uh, the alternative control measures that, that beekeepers have used are not always that effective and in many countries there's not a good choice of effective methods available. On misli da su alternativne metode kontrole koje pčelari koriste definitivno nedovoljno efikasne i da imaju ozbiljne nedostatke. So, to go back to the early days of Ferrer in Britain, the first product to be licensed in the UK was Baverol. Preben's already mentioned it, Flumethrin is the active ingredient and then the next year we had Apistan Talfluvalinate, uh, again a, a, a similar uh, compound. Videli ste prvo, 1993. im je odobren zvanično preparat na bazi flumetrina, zatim 1994. na bazi Talfluvalinata. These were both extremely effective uh, control methods uh, under good conditions. They could be 99% uh, effective at removing mites. They were very clean and convenient. You just put these strips in and beekeepers sometimes left the strips in for, for rather a long time. Uh, but for a while, beekeepers thought this problem had been solved. Na početku su imali izuzetnu efikasnost i bilo je sve tako lako i čisto da se to primeni i da se dobije dobar ishod, ali čevari, iako su se nadali, pokazalo se da nije to nikako rešenje. But of course it, it, it didn't last and um, this, this uh, map is actually uh, a little old now, but it, it shows what happened. Um, Resistance to pyrethroids was first discovered in, in northern Italy in, says there, 1991, uh, after these products had been used for about 20 years in, uh, in parts of um, Italy and France. Opet je isto kao što smo ranije rezimirali, problem je rezistencija koja se javila, rezistencija na piretroide se javila najpre na severu Italije i vremenom vidite dole po bojama kako se širila i pojavljivala, odnosno objavljivano je da postoji rezistencija redom u jednoj pojednoj zemlji, a kaže da je i ova mapa već zastarela iz 2008. Uh, and uh, within a few years, as you can see from the graph, uh, these resistant mites have spread around parts of Europe and I think resistance found its way to this part of the world at about the same time as it did in Britain. Ništa, samo oko širenja rezistencije, da se to definitivno dešava uvod, to nije nikakav sad fenomen koji ne znate. And so, I think most of Britain has mites that are resistant to the synthetic pyrethroids. We did some testing of our bees in Sussex only two or three years ago and found that they were, the mites were still very resistant to those synthetic pyrethroids. I posle ovako duže vremena pokušali su da vide da li ta rezistencija i dalje postoji, obzirom na dug period kada se prvi put javila, u Sussexu gde on radi na univerzitetu su radili i dalje i dalje je visok stepen rezistencije njihovih varora. So, I said beekeepers don't have a very good choice of varora uh, control methods, but in fact, uh, a few days ago I thought I would check uh, and this is a uh, a list of all the products that are available uh, that are licensed in the UK and uh, 
I'm sure it's not an exhaustive list. I think other things are also used. Ovo je prikaz svih preparata koji su kod njih dozvoljeni, znači licencirani za primjenu i ja sam sigurno da vi prepoznajete potpuno sve ove aktivne substance, ali kažu da to nije cela lista, da je siguran da ima još nečega što se koristi na terenu. So, in, in the UK there are currently uh, 11 different licensed treatments available uh, and they contain nine different active ingredients. Znači, trenutno u Engleskoj je 11 licenciranih tretmana protiv aroe, a u okviru njih je 9 različitih aktivnih substancija. Uh, but my question would be, have all these products been tested under UK conditions? Ali postavljam, profesor, postavljam pitanje, da li su svi oni testirani u uslovima klimatskim koji vladaju baš u Engleskoj? And the question is, do they work? No, kraće rečeno, da li oni rade posao? So if we go back to our list... Da, da, ako se vratimo na ovu listu preparata... At the top we have these synthetic pyrethroids, which, uh, as I've already said, do not work in most parts of Britain. Za ove prve već smo rekli da, pošto su na bazi flumetrina, ne rade u Engleskoj već duže vreme, zbog rezistencije. We have a, uh, uh, a group of products which uh, rely on essential oils and we have other products uh, relying on organic acids and I'm going to talk about them in a minute. Ostali proizvodi kao što vidite uglavnom se baziraju na etarskim uljima, biljaka ili organskim kiselinama. And then we have two products based on Amitraz that have been licensed quite recently. Imaju od nedavno i nekoliko proizvoda sa Amitrazom. Nedavno je licencirano i nekoliko proizvoda sa Amitrazom. So some of these products I don't have any personal experience of and I don't think have actually been tested in the UK. So for the rest of my talk I'm going to be talking about things that I have personal experience of or particularly that we've actually done experimental studies on. On sa mnogima nema lično iskustvo i zato će nadalje da priča samo za ono što ima lično iskustvo. So I'm going to briefly mention this product, Apigard, which is also available in, in Sweden, I've used it myself. Uh, it's a, uh, a gel containing uh, thymol. Znači, prvo će reći nešto kratko o Apigardu, za koga zna da postoji u Švedskoj, i njegove iskustva o efikasnosti, a znate šta je, gel sa timolom. And this relies on uh, the thymol coming out of the gel uh, and uh, going throughout the hive and affecting the bees. And as such, it is quite dependent on temperature uh, and humidity as to how well it works. Samim tim što se njegovo dejstvo bazira na isparavanju i na taj način dospeva do svake pčele, mnogo njegove efikasno zavise od vlage i od temperature. And in my experience, uh, if you use it when the temperatures are too high, uh, the bees really do not like it, uh, and I have had bees abscond with this product where they just leave the hive and, and, and fly off. Čim je toplije, pčele nikako ne mogu da podnesu isparavanje veliko i, i po njegovom ličnom iskustvu pčele bukvalno napuste košnicu. Alternatively, if the temperature is too cold, it really doesn't spread throughout the hive uh, and it has very little effect. Opet ako je suviše hladno, onda ne isparava dovoljno i nikakvu posebnu efikasnost ne može da ispolji. And this is another product uh, which has also been around for a while and I've also used it myself. This uh, it has thymol in it, but it also has eucalyptus and, and a number of uh, 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 other essential oils in it. Um, but it suffers from uh, similar problems. Slični problemi su i sa ovim preparatom, Apilajvar. So to come back to our map of the climate, uh, this is why I showed it. Those products work well for me 
in southern England, but they don't work throughout the country. High ground, uh, and then they will bring them back home in the very late summer, perhaps in uh, September, uh, October. Mnogi pčelari baš puno njih sa severnih krajeva sele pčele, tamo gdje ima puno vresa, znači na neki jugozapadni deo. And by that time the temperature is too cold in those northern areas for products like Apigar to actually be effective. I onda vrate pčele u taj severni region negde u jesen i onda deluju Apigardo. So in terms of what we actually do, I want to talk a little bit about the concept of integrated pest management or integrated varroa management. Integrisano, so management u kome se veći broj metoda koristi po posebnoj strategiji usmere proti varroe. And as its name suggests, this involves looking at the, the pest, in this case Varroa, in the, to get the big picture, to understand what's going on and how to treat it most effectively. And in terms of Varroa, I think our starting point really wants to be that the bees we are using are at least partially resistant to Varroa, and Trevor has already mentioned this. The second thing is, we need to monitor our mite population, so we need to know at least roughly how many mites are in our colonies. Drugo treba da uvek pratimo procenat infekcije odnosno brojnost populacije krpelja. And the reason for knowing how many mites are in our colonies is that we only treat when we absolutely need to. We've seen that graph showing how uh, the damage is directly related to the number of mites present. Uh, so if we know how many mites are present, we can treat at the right time and when we need to. A tretmo treba obaviti samo ako je neophodno. Znači ne treba bez provere i dobrog raštonjivanja svih detalja i stanja u košnici primeniti tretmo, nego samo ako je neophodno. So, where do we get our resistant bees from? Odakle da dobijemo rezistentnom čelom? I want to talk about work we've done at the University of Sussex and, and we have a project called the Sussex Plan for Honeybee Health and Wellbeing. And one part of this uh, was breeding disease-resistant hygienic honeybees. Jedna stvar u okviru tog plana jeste da gaje one pčele koje su rezistentne, odnosno koje imaju visoko izraženo higijensko ponašanje radi izbacivanja zaraženog leglava roba. So what do we mean by hygienic behavior? Šta podrazumevamo pod higijenskim ponašanjem? So hygienic behavior is not a new idea, it's been known about since the 1930s and well studied in the 1960s. Nije to nešto novo, to je opšte poznata stvar već jako dugo i dosta definisana već 60. godina prošlog veka. And the, the origin of, of hygienic behavior uh, came from work by uh, a scientist in the United States called Walter Rothenmuller. Rothenmuller, And Rothenmuller knew a commercial beekeeper who used to sell second-hand beekeeping equipment. And this beekeeper would buy uh, 
beehives from uh, beekeepers whose bees had died from American fowl brood, <laughs> and he would bring them back uh, to his yard, and when he had time, he would clean up the equipment and sell it. Znači, taj naučnik je u stvari zarađivao tako što kupi košnice od pčelara, čije su društvo uginulo od američke truleži, kad stigne on ih očisti, sredi, doradi pa proda. And Rothenbuehler noticed that this beekeeper, despite having all this infected equipment, uh, and American fowl brood is a very infectious disease, despite having this infected equipment around, this beekeeper's bees appeared to be thriving. Appears to be. Thriving, still living, living okay. well. Znači, interesantno je da su kod njega društva obstajala, iako ih je gajio u tim košnicama koje su pre toga imala društvo od američke truleže volelo. And when Rothenbuehler studied these bees, he found that they had the ability to detect sealed cells that had American fowl brood in them, and they cleaned those cells out uh, as he termed it hygienically, uh, and thus avoided uh, suffering from the disease themselves. It was very interesting to approach how the bees are living and not the bees, even if they are exposed to the American trolls, and discovered that in these societies there are the bees of the larvae, ali da ih one jako efikasno čiste i društvo kao društvo ne oboli, ne razvija se klinički znaci bolest. And he was able to demonstrate that this hygienic behavior was a genetic trait and that you could breed bees for this characteristic. And he found that in a, a given population uh, of, of bees, there would be some colonies that showed this hygienic behavior. Posmatrujući duže vreme, uočio je i da je ta osobina nasledna, tako da mogu da se odgaje pčele na higijensko ponašnje, kako mi to kažemo, odnosno one koje su više naklonjene čišćenju obolelih larvi od nekih drugih. Znači, od njega potiče ideja selekcije pčela na higijensko ponašanje. And later it was demonstrated that bees that were hygienic in relation to American fowl brood were also uh, hygienic in relation to chalk brood, which is a fungal disease. Kasnije je utvrdio da osim što su otporne na američku trulež, istovremeno su otporne i na krečno leglo, jer po istom principu pčele uklanjaju i larve koje su volele od krečno leglo. And then more recently still, it was suggested that bees that are hygienic towards American fowl brood and chalk brood would also be hygienic towards varroa. I treće, otporne su i na varrou, jer izbacuju ovako infestirane larve, a takođe i lutke sa velikim broj varrou. So about 10 years ago at the University of Sussex we started a, a breeding program to uh, try and increase this hygienic behavior uh, for varroa control. Tako da su i oni na osnovu toga započeli gajanje i selekciju pčela na higijensko ponašanje. And this is a uh, these are hygienic bees in an observation hive performing hygienic behavior. And there we have uh, bees that have detected a dead pupa and are dragging it out of the hive. And the advantage of hygienic behavior is that it's a trait that we can easily measure. A to je osobina koja može lako i da se izmeri, da se kvantifikuje. And how do you test for it? There are uh, a number of different methods, but the one we have used is trees killed brood. Jedan više načina postoji, jedan od načina je da se eksperimentalno ubije određeni broj pčela, odnosno larvi, 
pomoću tečnog azota. Is there liquid nitrogen from tečnim azotom? Yeah, so uh, we have here the, the equipment you need. Šta vam je potrebno do opreme? This is a tin can with the top and bottom cut off. Konzerva koju ste ocekli dno i vrh, poklopac. And you pour on liquid nitrogen into that uh, small round area that you've put your tin on. I sipate tečni azot niz zidove te konzerve koju ste stavili na leglo tako da uništi svo leglo u tom krugu koji zaklapa konzervu. So you get a comb with a, a circle cut in it uh, like these and all the bees or all the, all the pupae within that circle should be dead. Uh, one bi sve trebale da budu ubijene i onda treba da pratite koliko njih ubijenih će izneti higijenske pčele. And you can photograph those frames and count the number of cells that are in them. Da bi to, ne bi, da ne bi brojali istog momenta, najbolje da fotografišete kako izgleda taj krug pre uh, i nakon ostvarene aktivnosti higijenskih pčela. And then you come back uh, two days later on day three. Nakon tri dana kada dođete. And this is the kind of thing you see. Evo vidite kako izgleda gore, vidite ove krugove gdje je očišćeno leglo u vidu dva kruga, a kako izgleda dole gdje nije očišćeno. So as you can see the top colony has removed most of the dead brood. This is the colony you want. Ova gore, ova gore društvo gdje vidite da su potpuno pčele očistile sve koje ste uništili tečnom azotom, to je društvo koje vam treba kako želite. But the, the colony at the bottom as you can see is not hygienic and has not removed most of the uh, društvo ispod, brood. znači leglo iz društva ispod, vidite da nije očišćeno u okviru ova dva kruga i tako društvo vam ne treba jer ono nema sposobnost da očisti ubijene larve, lutke. And this is what you will see in a, in a, a good hygienic colony, you will see that all the cells have been removed. Ovdje vidite kod ovih jako higijenskih da su sva, sve ćelije očišćene. This one is not quite so good uh, and you can see that uh, uh, they have uncapped many cells uh, but not removed all of them. Ovdje nije baš najbolje izraženo higijensko ponašanje. Čak vidite brojne ćelije u kojima su ostale larve. Znači, uspele su čele da skinu poklopčić, ali nisu izvukle larve i nisu je uklonile. Uh, and the reason why this might be so is that hygienic behavior doesn't appear to be just one trait. Uh, Walter Rothenmuller thought that there were two genes that controlled it one for uncapping and one for removing. Na osnovu toga je data teorija, to je davno data teorija, opet od strane tog prvog naučnika, da higijensko ponašnje nije jednostavna akcija da ista pčela to radi, nego da postoji malte ne gen za otklapanje i gen za izvlačenje lutke. And we now know that there seem to be seven genes that control different aspects of hygienic behavior. Danas znamo da postoji najmanje sedam gena koji utiču na ispoljavanje higijenskog ponašanja. And since the queens in our colony may mate with perhaps ten drones, it may be that some of the bees in your colony will have the gene for one aspect of hygienic behavior and others may have the other aspects. Uh, but we ideally want a colony that combines all of those. As a kakve matica polyandrična, odnosno pari se sa velike broje trutova, potomstvo je od različitih očeva, tako da ćete imati čitav spektar različitih potomaka, odnosno radilica. Neki će biti jako higijenične, neke manje, neke još manje, neke uopšte. 
but it is possible to breed for hygienic behaviour and we have demonstrated that you can do so uh, quite quickly. And so the colony at the top, 92% removed, that is the kind of colony you would want to work from. Uh, and the one at the colony at the bottom you would not want to use. Praxe pokazala da ipak može da se radi selekcija na higijensko i postiže se procenat od 92, znači 92 procenta efikasnog čišćenja kod tako odgrenih, namenski odgrenih čela. So by rearing queens from the colonies that we'd selected on that basis, uh, we were able to quite rapidly uh, improve the, the uh, hygienic behaviour of our colonies. Uh, and so we, we were able to, uh, to build up our numbers quite quickly uh, and demonstrate to our own satisfaction that, that we had uh, hygienic bees. And subsequently, uh, what we've done is we've organized lots of workshops for beekeepers uh, to come and, and see the techniques we're using uh, and to try and encourage local breeding groups around the country to adopt the techniques that, that we've been using. Kao što vidite, edukovali su uh, ostale pčelare koji su bili zainteresovani držeći kurseve i objašnjavajući tak konkretno kako se radi ta analiza procena higijenskog da bi oni mogli da primene metodu selekcije. Uh, and uh, you know we, we really do believe that these these techniques are things that, that local beekeeping groups could uh, could get together and do. It is possible to get hold of liquid nitrogen and, and work from uh, from a, a local group. Smatram da to jest oni veruju zaista da je to pravo rešenje i da nije nikakav problem da se samo udruženja uh, organizuju da nabave tečni azot, da procene svaki put i da na taj način uh, odgaje pčele koje su sa visokim higijenskim ponašanjem, da je to rešenje. Uh, and we've reported uh, what we've done in, in various ways. This is, this is a book that uh, Deirdre published a few years ago, and there is a chapter in this book that explains exactly what we were doing at the University of Sussex. Uh, but an important question, of course, in all this is, does it actually work? And this was a paper that some of my colleagues produced a few years ago, which demonstrates that our hygienic bees actually have uh, a smaller number of mites present, and not only that, they also have a lower incidence of deformed wing virus. Znači, uh, opet u, o primjeni takvih metoda u uh, strategiji kontrole, obzirom na variabilnost u higijenskom ponašanju, uh, koliko to utiče na mogućnost smanjenja populacije ili povećanja i pojavu deformisana virusa. But I have a question. And, and the next question is, if hygienic behaviour is so good, why does it only seem to turn up at perhaps 10% of the wild population? Ako je tako dobro higijensko ponašanje, zašto se dešava samo u oko 10% neselekcionisani društava? Zašto pčele same nisu isforsirale tu osobinu da bude prisutna u većem broju društava, u većem procentu generalno? 
and it's been suggested that the reason for this might be that there is a cost associated with hygienic behaviour. So, for example, if you have very hygienic colonies, might they be removing healthy brood and thus harming the colony? To košta zajednicu, to je prilično skupa radnja, jer mnogo čela se odbaci i zbog toga se pravi neki balans između koristi i štete od tog higijenskog balašanja. Znači, prirodno, 10% društava ima tako izraženo higijensko. And this was a paper that some of my colleagues wrote addressing this question. And in the experiments that they did, they were unable to demonstrate that there was a cost associated with hygienic behavior. They didn't? Aha, to je bila znači jedna teorija, ali nisu mogli da dokažu eksperimentalno da je to razlog. Zašto mali procena društava ima higijesko? Prirodno gledano. So I don't know why hygienic behavior doesn't occur in all colonies. It may be there is a cost, uh, but it was not shown in these experiments. Znači, to jednostavno u ovom eksperimentu nije dokazano, ali dalje postoji dilema da li jest ili nije. And these are just some articles that we've written for beekeepers in the UK to tell them what we're doing. Ovako oni svoje pčelare obaveštavaju, znači preko pčelarskih časopisa. And my colleagues have also been selling some of these queens to beekeepers, although on a very small scale. Postoji čak i komercijalizacija svega toga, određeni odgajivači higijenskih pčela prodaju takve matice i to vidite preko interneta. So to come back to the integrated pest management, the next thing is we do need to monitor the bite population. Znači opet savjet da se obavezno prati, svaki pčela prati situaciju kolika je stepen infekcije i festiranosti kod njegovih pčela. And as Trevor has mentioned, there are many ways you can measure the mite population. The simplest way uh, is to have a tray at the bottom of the, the hive, uh, collect the debris and count the number of mites. It's, it's very easy to do. Više načina, ali jedan od najčešćih, sličan, odnosno isti kao što je Preben rekao, da prebrojite krpenja na podnjači. Lepljivo. But this, this technique works very well in the height of summer and in the depth of winter, and you get a very consistent uh, relationship between the number of mites you find on the floor uh, and the number of mites in the colony. Ali to je baš pouzdano u određenim periodima, u kasno leto i u sred zime. But unfortunately in the spring or in the autumn, uh, the relationship is much more complex because you do not know what proportion uh, of the mites are on the adult bees or in the seal brood. Ali u proleće i jesen nije to baš pouzdan način određivanja stepena infestacije. Ne znate kada su? Vi ste rekli 2000, kad je to? Sorry? Rekli ste 2000, merilo zarno. Kad je to? Aha, that threshold of 2000... To je on rekao. 2000 mites. Um, so one other technique you can use is actually washing mites from adult bees, uh, and, and we use this routinely in our in our experiments. Uh, and uh, you know, for, for what I'm going to, to to talk about, it's very important to know the number of mites uh, on adult bees in in broodless colonies. Drugi način je ispiranjem adultim pčele. Malo pre smo rekli, mane mogu da budu kad ne znate da li su sadultnik ili izlegla varoje, a ovde su sigurno sadultnik kad ispirate na ovaj način mlazom vode, sapunica i drugo. And so the final part of our, our uh, program really is, is treating uh, the colonies when necessary. When, when you have 
too many mites. And really, the, the choice of treatment will be very dependent on your particular conditions, as, as both of us have really been saying. But I'm going to talk about something that we find effective uh, at the University of Sussex. Tretiranje treba samo kad je potrebno, a na koji ćete tretman izabrati zavisi od brojnih faktora, on će reći šta oni rade. Uh, so, as I said, there is a need for these techniques to actually be tested under, under UK conditions. And so, this was some work where we were comparing different uh, techniques for applying oxalic acid. Da, na primjer, šta su radili u uslovima engleske, ovdje konkretno sada poređenje uh, različitih tipova primjene oksalne kiseline. And Trevon has already mentioned sublimation, where you heat uh, oxalic acid crystals uh, using various um, proprietary tools. This one is a Verox one, which I think is also available in, Switzerland, in Sweden. Prvo metod sublimacije, to znate da ne objašnjavam i vidite. And then you can also spray or trickle the uh, oxalic acid uh, onto the bees. Bukvalno možete da drugi način da u vidu spreja prskate pčele ovako po ramovima kao na drugoj slici. So we were spray we were comparing trickling uh, spraying and sublimation using the same amounts of active ingredient uh, well or, or in fact three different doses. Znači, poredili su tri načina, nakapavanje, zatim spray, kada prskaju i ovaj treći sublimaciju, sa istom količinom oksane i koncentracijom. So th this, this is a paper from uh, a PhD student we had called Hassan Altafalia, whose PhD project was on various aspects of integrated control of Roa. Uh, evo kako izgleda naučni rad koji iz toga proistekao, znači uh, upoređivali su nekoliko tipova aplikacije oksalne kiseline i upoređivali doze, osim tipova, znači doze su uh, radili komparativno kako sve to utiče na mortalitet, odnosno ubijanje krpenja. And I, I'm going to go through these results in, in some detail because uh, I personally was a little bit surprised by the results they obtained. I was, I think, quite skeptical of the use of sublimation of oxalic acid and I was concerned about the safety aspects of it. On, on, on je lično bio iznenađen rezultatima, očekivao je da sublimacija ostvaruje rizik, znači da, da kod sublimacije postoji rizik. Because you have to bear in mind that uh, oxalic, oxalic acid uh, vapor uh, is extremely harmful and you do need to wear protective equipment uh, when you carry out sublimation. So this graph was just looking at the uh, numbers of mites falling from the colony after treatment. Evo ovdje na grafikonu se prikazuje brojnost krpelja nakon tretmana. So you can see a large number of mites uh, did fall from the, uh, the colonies immediately after treatment. Uh, but what, uh, what efficacy did that represent? Uh, koja je tačna efikasnost? Jer ovdje praće, praćene su i pčele i krpelji i imali ste kontrolne i tretirane košnice. So this, this graph represents the mortality of the varroa as the number of mites uh, in, on bees before and after the treatment. Brojnost krpelja pre i nakon tretmana je praćena. So the black columns represent sublimation at four different doses. I onda imate rezultate ovi crni stubići, pokazuju rezultate uh, nakon sublimacije. The light gray represents the spraying at three different doses. U sredini uh, su rezultati nakon aplikacije u vidu spreja, tri različite doze. And the dark gray is the trickling at three doses. 
tamno sivo, nakapavanjem, opet tri različite doze su testirane. And then there were control colonies. I ona prva, prva što piše kontrol, to je kontrolna, koja nije tretirana. And you can see that the, the higher doses trickling and spraying were effective, uh, but the lower doses were less so, were effective at controlling for our Ovo što sam malo pre rekla je važilo za nakapavanje i sprej, ali kad je u pitanju sublimacija, sve četiri doze su bile efikasne. And this is really the same thing, but this is looking at the number of mites uh, falling from the colonies, uh, and you can see again the sublimation appears to be the most effective. What is the difference between this and so this, this one was, this one was mites on top, the other one was mites on the other. Na jednu grafikonu je prikazan broj krpelja na adultim čelama, a ovde je na podnjači. U svakom slučaju, brojnost krpelja je praćena i opet oksalna je u svim testiranim koncentracijama imala jako dobru efikasnost. Sublimaciju. Kod svih doza je jako dobru efikasnost. A koje su? Piše dole. Dozes. Koje su dozes? Dozes. Te... The doses on the bottom, yes. About the flight doses. Uh, 0.5, 1.125, 2.5, 4.5. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It was either the it was either the oxalic acid crystals or the same amount in 50 mils of Znači, ili su kristali u pitanju, ili u šećernu siru po 50%. Koliko gram? Ima svih detalja u ovom objavljenom radu, znači nije ništa što se krije, vidite dole referencu, znači može to sve lepo da se nađe u radu, ima svaki detalj u radu koji je prvo prikazao naslovnu stranu. Zapišite ovog autora i John Apikača Research. Znači mora uvek da bude ista koncentracija u različitim metodama. U svim metodama su u principu slične koncentracije rađe. Da, 0,56 je prva, to vidite svuda, pa 1,125 svuda, pa 2,25 svuda. S tim što je za oksanu bila i četvrta. Za sublimaciju je bila i četvrta najveća doza, od četiri i po. A sve tri metode su rađene sa tri koncentracije, od 0,56, 1,125 i 225. Grama, piše dole. So, what effect did this have on the colonies? Was it harmful to them? Because On je mislio da će sublimacija biti jako štetna za sama društva. A štetna je za pčela. But in fact, this is the survival of the colonies at the end of this particular experiment, and other experiments have been done. And in fact, overall, the least number of colonies that survived were at the highest dose of spray. Ovo je, ovo su rezultati preživljavanja. Pri čemu, det... X. So the X is where those colonies were queenless at the end of the experiment, but that seems to be distributed between all of the the colonies and may not be related to the treatment we were applying, but we we need to record it. Stim što su ove znaci X oznaka za uginule matice što ne mora da znači da je obavezno posledica tretmana na kraju eksperimenta. 
and this is looking at the, the strength of the colonies uh, at the end of the experiment in terms of the uh, number of frames with um, sealed or, or, or open brood uh, and the effect isn't quite as dramatic but it's still the strongest colonies were the ones that had had the sublimation uh, treatment and the weakest colonies were the higher rate uh, that had been sprayed. Uh, pratili su svi društvima i jačinu društva i broj ramova sa ledlom i opet se pokazalo da su društva tretirana oksalnom najbolje opstala, najbolje preživala. And finally on this, this, this section, when you come to make a decision about what treatment uh, you employ, uh, there will be all kinds of practical considerations such as cost and the time taken. And uh, this is just showing the time taken for these different methods. Kada treba da odlučite koji ćete metodu, nije to samo efikasnost i koja je posljedica ostavlja, nego i vreme koje treba da utrošite, koštanje, znači cena, sve to se uzima u obzir. And as you can see, clearly for the sublimation, the more crystals you are applying, the longer it takes for, the, the, uh, uh, for it to sublimate. Uh, and the same amount of time is taken for each of the spraying and trickling methods. Onda opet ovdje imate kod sublimacije da je najmanje vreme u nekim, ali naravno kako je veća količina, tako je duže vreme potrebno za kristale oksalne da deluju, a kod metode spray je jako, jako dugo vreme potrebno, znači najviše oduzima vreme. And again, to my surprise, my colleagues found that once they had the, the equipment for sublimation and were effective at using it, uh, they found it was extremely quick uh, and quicker than the uh, spraying method. Daleko je, daleko je, znači kraće vreme je potrebno za sublimaciju nego što je bilo potrebno za, za druge, sprovođenje drugih metoda. A tri minuta treba da se ohladi ono za sublimaciju. Kako je kraće? Dajte mi reč. Čekaj. Tri. Pusti kolega da predaje. Kad ti predaješ, niko će da spet. Ovo je već već. Ja, as I say, before you use the long time. Nije rekao da je kraće. Uporedio su drugi. Dajte mi reč. Ja sam manju sad imam pravo na naučnu pisu. On uduzimo pravo. I mean, it, it's worth noting, as Preben said, that there are different uh, pieces of equipment available for sublimating, and some may be more effective and more rapid than others. These were the results that my colleagues obtained with this particular evaporator. <laughs> Ovo je u stvari kolega, je tačno navio čija su istraživanja i kakvi su rezultati dobijeni. So really to, to conclude all this, and again it really follows on from, from everything Treban was saying, I think bee scientists and, and extension people probably agree that in order to effectively control varroa you need to use a combination of techniques. Da, većina ipak smatra nakon dužeg proučavanja i nakon diskusije naučnika i praktičnih čela koji se bave praksom, da je kombinovanje metoda i substanci najbolje. And probably the starting point that everyone needs to aim for is having bees that are at least partially resistant. And that resistance could be obtained by deliberate selection, as we were doing, or by using survivor bees, as the experiment in Sweden and, and other projects around the world are, are demonstrating. There are various approaches to producing bees that are at least partially resistant to varroa. Uh, opet sve ovo zavisi od toga kakve su bile pčele u osnovi, da li ste pre toga odradili neku selekciju, da li su bar delom otporne same na varou ili imate neke kojima ne može nijedan tretman da, da pomogne. Tako da sve to može da treba se uzme u obzir 
da nikada će rezultati 20 žiru da budu identični, da ćete vi baš dobiti isto ovako. And the second point has to be that beekeepers need to be aware of the varroa populations in their colonies. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be incredibly accurate about counting the number of mites, but with experience you get a feel for a colony that has lots of mites in it, or a colony that has no mites in it. And if you see bees with tripled wings, your colony has a lot of mites in it. Da, kaže toko vremena steći ćete iskustvo da ne morate da brojite svakog krpelja, nego ćete vrlo brzo os određenog vremena znati i na osnovu pogleda podnjače da kažete da ima puno, ima osrednje, ima malo. Također ako vidite čele sa krilima koja su nestala, odnosno ostali su samo patrljci, da tako kažem, sigurno imate puno varova. To je već dovoljan znak da imate puno varova. And then finally, when you are uh, satisfied that you have too many mites in your colonies, you need to treat them with an appropriate technique. And the appropriate technique will vary from where you are, uh, depending on your climatic conditions. I konačno opet, koji ćete metodu odabrati, zavisi velikim delom od klime, osim svih drugih faktora, znači to uvek morate da da vodite računa, da napravite svoju strategiju, a ne da uzimate nekog iz bilo koje zemlje koja ima potpuno drugačiju klimu. And so products that are very dependent on temperature and humidity, like the essential oils, will work well in some places and not work well in others. Opet i u određenom klimatskom području neki dan je vlažan i hladan, drugi dan je topo i suh, tako da je sve to jako, jako varijeno. Uh, but techniques such as uh, the use of oxalic acid that are less dependent on climate uh, will probably be effective in, in many places. Oxalic with the... Okay, so oxalic acid will be the uh, but that, uh, you know, testing these things under your particular conditions uh, as beekeepers is, is important to uh, uh, develop effective control strategies. Uh, and here are just some uh, websites where there is useful information. So, on the... University of Sussex website, there is information about our work on integrated management. On the IBRA website, uh, you can find papers. And COLOS is an organization that both Trevor, Trevor and I are involved in, uh, which is studying the effects of um, many factors on loss of colonies. Znači imate i web sajtove i organizacija, već kad smo kod kolosa, evo mi smo svi iz te organizacije i oni su mnogo duže, duže od mene i mnogo značajnije uloge imaju, ali ona anketa koju smo sprovodili prošle godine, gde je bio, nažalost, katastrofalno slab odziv od strane vas u Čelara, bilo je par oni koji su izvukli situaciju, koji su odradili savršen posao predsednika nekoliko iz Surdulice iz Niša, ali ostali su pojedinačno preko interneta i to je jako malo. Tako da, to je jedan od načina kako da dobijemo od vas informacije. I just said some a few words about Colos and about questionnaire because last year it was really bad answer from big keepers so this is just to remind them because we we should start in, in a few days when when I get a new questionnaire. Yes, yeah, so, uh, these Colos questionnaires that have been used in um, twenty something countries around Europe uh, have now built up a you know a, a large database of information about colony losses, and it's important that each country carries on uh, monitoring, and, and then we will understand better the variation between years and between countries in the loss rates that are occurring. And especially for, for, for each country, separately. 
Zašto je bitno da svako u svojoj zemlji to sprovede? Zato što mi ne možemo da smo rezultata u drugoj zemlji da donesemo zaključke i neke korake da preduzmemo, nego da smo rezultata kod nas. Tako da mislim, mi koji to sprovodimo ne ovo baš ništa od toga osim onoga da se vama bolje to sve približi, da bude prilagođeno vašoj situaciji, a ne da čitamo šta drugi rade u njihovim uslovima, s njihovim iskustvom, sa njihovim čelama, krajnjim i njihovim varoama. Jer mi imamo varoje koje su drugačije od ostalog. Mi imamo mnogo više autoktonih varoa nego onih sa kojima se bori sve. Tako da je najbitnije vaše informacije da imamo. Ok, I'll endeavor to answer any questions. Thank you.